Hello friends, welcome back to the channel Neat Biology Expert. I am Dr. Parveen. In today's video, we are going to discuss 2019 Neat Question Paper. Particularly, what are the questions which came from Class 12 Biology, the first unit reproduction in 2019 Neat Question Paper. So, let us discuss the question with its answer in detail. Let's get started. So, the first question is, what is the fate of male gametes discharged in the synergids? What is the fate of male gametes discharged in the synergids? We know that in, inside the synergid cells, two male gametes get discharged. The pollen tube brings two male gametes, right? So, what happens to those gametes? Okay, that is the question. All fuse with the egg. One fuse with the egg and other fuse with the synergid nucleus. One fuses with the egg. And other fuses with the central cell nuclei or one fuses with egg, others degenerate in the synergies. Okay. So, let us see the answer for this. So, this question has been taken from the chapter 2, Sexual Reproduction in Flowering Plants. So, in this chapter, if you see in NCRT book, page number 34, here is a paragraph under double fertilization. Okay. So, this paragraph explains about this events. So, let us zoom this and see. Okay. So, exactly what happens inside the embryo sac, okay, the pollen tube brings two male gametes. When they get inside the synergids, they get ruptured and release two male gametes. So, one male gamete, one male gamete, which is haploid, it fuses with one egg cell, okay, and it becomes 2N, that is zygote. So, this is what we call as syngamy, right? And the second male gamete, the second male gamete fuses with two polar nuclei, 2N. It's already 2N, okay? So, two polar nuclei and they become 3N. That we call as primary endosperm nucleus. This is what triple fusion is, okay? So, triple fusion and syngamy are the two events in double fertilization. So, if you see here, one male gamete fuses with the egg, another male gamete fuses with the two polar nuclei in the central cell. So, let us go back to the question again. What is the fate of the male gametes discharged in the synergids? Look here, all fuses with the egg. No, both do not fuse with the egg. Okay, so this is wrong. One fuses with the egg and other fuses with the synergid nucleus. So, here given synergid nucleus. No. The gametes will not fuse with the synergy nucleus. This is not the wrong answer. This is not the right answer. Okay. And third option is one fuses with the egg and another fuses with the central cell nucleus. Yes. Okay. See the fourth one. One fuses with the egg and others degenerate. They don't degenerate. Right. So third is the correct answer. The second question is extrusion of second polar body from egg nucleus occurs dash. Okay. Extrusion means what? Extrusion means separation. Separation or expelling out. Right. So, extrusion of the second polar body from the egg nucleus occurs when? After fertilization, before entry of the sperm into the ovum, simultaneously with first cleavage. Okay. After entry of the sperm, but before fertilization. So, this question is taken from human reproduction chapter. So, if you go to the page number 52, so there is a paragraph here, first paragraph. Okay. So, let us zoom this and see. See here. The second meiotic division is also unequal and results in the formation of second polar body and haploid ovum ootip. So, here it is given the second polar body forms after second meiotic division. We know that when second meiotic division occurs after the sperm enter because the sperm brings the centriole. So, once the centriole comes, the second meiotic division, it resumes. Right. So, during second meiotic division, the second polar body forms. So, exactly if you want to understand, so we must look at this picture which is given under figure 3.8 in page number 49. So, see this, this is oogonia, okay, oogenesis process, oogonia development. So, here during puberty, what happens? During puberty, a secondary oocyte gets ruptured from the graphene follicle. So, that time the first polar body also comes because the first meiotic division is uh, here, okay. First meiotic division occurs. So, this polar body get degenerated. Now, this secondary oocyte, when the sperm enters and meets the secondary oocyte, the second meiotic division resumes. So, when the second meiotic division resumes, that time it develops into 
a mature egg that is the ovum so during this time during the second meiotic division and another second polar body is formed okay this is exactly asked in the question so when the second polar body forms when the sperm comes and meets the ovum or the egg cell okay before fertilization so let us go back to the question extrusion of the second polar body from the egg nucleus occurs after fertilization is not the answer before entry of the sperm into the ovum is not the answer okay it occurs after entry of the sperm but before the fertilization occurs okay so this is the fourth one is the answer now let us move on to the third question which of the following contraceptive methods do involve a role of hormone so few contraceptive methods were given below which involve which involve the role of the hormones hormonal function is there in which of these methods okay the options are barrier method lactational amenorrhea pills second one cut copper tea pills emergency contraceptive third option pills emergency contraceptive barrier methods and the last option lactational amenorrhea pills and emergency contraceptive so here we know that the barrier methods do not have any hormonal activation or uh, control because they are just external right so see here barrier methods like condoms okay so condoms is the one example so barrier methods do not involve hormone so this is not the answer so cut copper t copper t is also like a physical method right so here also there is no action of the hormone here third given barrier method okay barrier method not having hormonal influence so what is the answer the answer is number four so this question is from the chapter reproductive health okay so if you see in the page number 60 a detailed description of the different methods of contraceptives and its a mode of action were given so if we study all this clearly we could able to answer this correctly okay so let me explain you in a short form see what happened in lactational amenorrhea lactational amenorrhea means after delivery if a mother feeds her baby so during that time what will happen the prolactin hormone level will be increased because it is needed for the milk secretion so during that time gonadotrophin levels will be decreased so she will not have ovulation so this is a natural contraceptive or a natural uh, method of contraception okay so here what happens prolactin level is increased as a result of the gonadotrophin level decreased this is lactational amenorrhea the second one certain oral pills contraceptive pills when the females use it so they contain progesterone or progesterone estrogen combination so which prevents the ovulation which suppresses the ovulation okay so when the estrogen when the estrogen level is high it prevents the ovulation so the egg release will not be there so thereby it is a method of contraception similarly emergency contraceptive means the females will take these pills which consist of progesterone or progesterone estrogen combination within 72 hours after coitus after sexual intercourse this also has the same role but they will take it emergency after the sexual intercourse so in all these methods or in all these three methods lactational amenorrhea oral pills and emergency contraceptives they all have hormonal control okay so when we look back the question again which of the following contraceptive methods do involve her role of hormone the answer is number four lactational amenorrhea pills and emergency contraceptive clear right so let us move on to the question number four which of the following sexually transmitted disease is not completely curable not completely curable okay so the options are genital warts genital herpes chlamydiasis or gonorrhea so this question is from the chapter reproductive health in the reproductive health go to page number 63 under the second paragraph under the heading sexually transmitted infection we have the details of this okay let us zoom this and see see here except for hepatitis b genital herpes and hiv infections other diseases are completely curable if detected early and treated properly we know that sexually transmitted infections are caused by bacteria viruses and some parasites also like here you see here gonorrhea syphilis herpes chlamydia all these are sexually transmitted infections so out of this 
except hepatitis b herpes genital herpes and hiv the other diseases are curable because we don't have any medicines to cure this diseases okay so particularly genital herpes is caused by herpes simplex virus type 2 okay so coming back to the question which of the following sexually transmitted disease is not completely curable the answer is genital herpes because what is curable chlamydiasis is a bacterial infection which is curable and gonorrhea is caused by Neisseria gonorrhea which is curable so the answer is genital herpes caused by herpes simplex virus 2 the next question question number 5 which of the following statements regarding post fertilization development in flowering plant is incorrect okay so in the flowering plant there are several events like pre-fertilization post-fertilization like this so post-fertilization events which statement is incorrect zygote develops into embryo central cell develops into endosperm ovules develop into embryo sac and ovary develops into fruit so this question is again from the chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plants and if you see page number 34 and 35 here given post fertilization events okay so look here following double fertilization events of the endosperm and embryo development maturation of the ovule into the seed and ovary into the fruit takes place so several post fertilization events take place so let us just make a crisp idea of this after post fertilization ovule becomes the seed ovary becomes the fruit zygote becomes the embryo and the central cell develops into the endosperm okay so these are the post fertilization events so let us go back to the question again look here which of the following statements regarding post fertilization development in flowering plants is incorrect zygote develops into embryo this is true central cell develops into endosperm true ovules develop into embryo sac this is false then what is the answer ovules develop into seeds right ovary develops into fruit true so the correct answer is number three which is the false statement the next question question number six select the correct sequence for transport of sperm cells in the male reproductive system so see here it is asked what is the route through which the sperms they get produced and ejaculated in the male reproductive system so several combinations were given four different several combinations okay so before looking at this let us first understand the route through which the sperm comes out so this question is from the chapter human reproduction and page number 43 here look at this picture of the male reproductive system so in a male reproductive system if we have the complete clear pictorial uh, idea of this uh, diagram we could easily answer this question okay so let me show you like this see here the answer for this question is number one okay so let me tell you how see here this is the testis this testis contains small small tube like structures they are these seminiferous tubules where the sperms are produced all the seminiferous tubules are collected here and comes to a region called reti testis they all gets collected here and comes to a region called vasa efferentia vasa efferentia has a long tube like ending this is called epididymis epididymis ends outside the testis in a very long tube called vas difference vas difference comes out and ends in ejaculatory duct ejaculatory duct comes out through urethra and it releases through the urethral meatus so this is the root we have to have a clear idea about this root this pathway okay so accordingly the answer is number one let us move on to the next question question number seven persistent new cellars in the seed is known as dash persistent new cellars okay so options are perisperm hilum tegman or chalasa so this question is again from the chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plants and if you see page number 36 here is a paragraph the last line of this paragraph under c development okay so let us have a closed picture of this see here occasionally in some seeds such as black pepper and beet remnants of the new cellars are also persistent this residual persistent new cellars is perisperm so what is the meaning of this we know that in the ovule the center part is the embryo sac embryo sac is surrounded by new cellus tissues okay so what happens when the uh, seed develops sometimes the outer outer tissue layer that is the new cellus also forms like a thin layer of uh, coating like surrounding the seed in some 
plant species. Example for this are black pepper and beetroot. This is very, very uh, exceptional thing. Okay. Generally, new cellars will not be present. In some seeds, they are present. They are called remnants of the new cellars. So, that thin layer surrounding the seed formed by the new cellars is called as perisperm. Okay. So, let's see the options. Persistent new cellars in the seed is known as perisperm. Okay. Not hilum, tegmen or chalasa. So, the answer is perisperm. So, so far in 2019, need question paper, okay, from the first unit in class 2 reproduction, three questions, three questions came from sexual reproduction in flowering plants and two questions came from each human reproduction and reproductive health and no questions came from the first chapter reproduction in organism in this particular paper, okay. So, totally seven questions are there from this first unit. So, I hope this session will be useful for you. If you like this, like, comment, share and subscribe to our channel, Meet Biology Expert. Thank you.